Hello, welcome back to lecture 14 and today is the last lecture on this two terminal microwave devices. We will continue from where we had left last time which is about the discussion on gun diode. Uh, we introduced the concept of the ba very basic concept of how the gun diode works and the way the fact that we get a negative differential resistance. We will continue to build up upon that. Uh, we should note here that gun diode is a very vast topic and it will require lot of hours of discussion to actually get a complete feel of gun diode. So, we will we'll go through what is necessary to appreciate how a gun diode works, okay, but we will not go through the details of mathematical derivations because there is a lot of that in general. However, my slides will be there, you can refer to that if you are interested to know the detailed mathematics and other things of the gun diode. Okay. So, what is the whiteboard here? So, in the last lecture I told you that uh, in a material such as gallium arsenide, you have a primary valley of course and then you have another satellite valley. Okay. And this valley separation is for instance around 0 0.36 electron volt. Uh, the electrons are predominantly here, but at a certain electric field which is typically between 2 to 4 kilo volt per centimeter at, in that kind of an electric field, electrons will get to the other valley and then they will suddenly experience a low effective or oh sorry very high effective mass and that is why low mobility. So, electrons in this valley typically have a mobility of around 8000 and in fact electrons in this valley typically have a mobility of around 200. Okay, because the effective mass here is 0 0.068, but the effective mass here is around 1.2. Okay, okay. So, and when you when the electrons go to the other valley, then the total conductivity of the material is a combination of mobility. This is the lower valley, this is the upper valley. So, mobility in the lower valley, number of electrons on the lower valley plus mobility in the upper valley into number of electrons on the upper valley, the combination of both of them. So, if you you know do some math you can you can you can take a derivative of this function for instance you want to find out how this conductivity changes as a function of electric field e is the electric field you want that this quantity should be negative because only then you will get negative differential resistance okay and so uh, you invoke certain uh, you know mathematical assumptions here and stuff like that and you also assume that the the variation of the mobility with electric field whether electric field varies with mobility is uh, you know there's a there's a dependence on e to the power p P is some kind of exponent. Okay. And so, people have done this derivation and we do not have to derive it here, but it so happens that to actually make this quantity negative or to have this negative differential resistance, uh, the, this value, this, 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 this parameter P which is an exponent uh, that dictates the, uh, the mobility, the variation of mobility to the electric field, this parameter is very, very critical. Okay. This should be as large as possible and should be negative only then you will get a negative differential resistance okay mathematically speaking now apparently it so happens that if you have an impurity scattering of electron impurity scattering if you have impurity scattering then this p is actually positive if you remember if you plot mobility with respect to for instance temperature you know with impurity your mobility keeps rising with phonon the mobility keeps dropping remember that so, this p exponent is kind of positive for impurity scattering and if you have lot of impurity scattering then you will not get a negative differential resistance because impurity scattering will mask out this effect of intervalley scattering and you know ex getting another valley and things like that. So, that is why you need a very pure material, you need a very pure material with as minimum impurity as possible okay? that is very important. right? And so, the theory of this uh, negative differential resistance was built by three gentlemen. Uh, we call it R W H theory. Okay, the fact that it goes to another valley and then there is a lower effective mass. Uh, okay, this is built by three people. H stands for Hilsum, W stands for Watkins, and R stands for probably Reed. Okay, there are three people here who uh, who came up with this theory of uh, the fact that the current oscillates when you have a negative differential resistance. Okay. But maybe I did not tell you the exact picture. The first person who actually uh, observed this, you know, he had put a voltage pulse, a, you know, a DC voltage pulse in a way you can say, and he was observing the current to oscillate. So, when he, what, he, what he did was that he took a slab of gallium arsenide. So, for instance, he took a piece of gallium arsenide, something like that, okay. okay. And this is how the typical dimensions look like, for instance, okay. So, he took a piece of gallium arsenide, and this side is your cathode, the other side is your anode of course, and this dimension could be say 75 micron and in that range uh, this dimension this is gallium arsenide by the way this dimension could be say 120 micron and this dimension could be say 100 micron. So, when you you know pulse uh, uh, voltage the output current they, they saw it was it was oscillating like that. 
there is an oscillation on the output current. And this oscillation of the output current correlated with the negative differential resistance was developed by these three gentlemen R W H. And this is also a manifestation of the way velocity behaves in this material. If you have a velocity field relation, the velocity typically has to increase and then saturate, correct? That is how velocity that is how it happens in silicon. But in here, the velocity actually increases and then it decreases, okay? There is a peak and then decreases. This decrease in velocity also is the reason why it manifests NDR, and this is the reason for this valley, you know, the it goes from one valley to another valley that I discussed, you know, goes to a low effective uh, a mobility valley, and that is why the current or the velocity also decreases in the sense key your effective mass now changes. So, you also exhibit this same thing. But so, this RWS theory was done by these three gentlemen, but the oscillation, the fact that this oscillates, and there is something called domain formation that we will come to. Uh, the person called Herbert Cromer who got the Nobel Prize in 2000, he actually uh, convinced and testified that this RWS theory is sufficient enough to explain the oscillation and the domain formation. Okay. This was established by Cromer, he basically established the fact that RWS theory is the correct theory because there are other competing theories also. Okay. So, what happens is that in this kind of a, let me go to uh, a different slide here. Okay. So, because the effective ma mass changes in different valley, you have this negative differential resistance and you get this uh, uh, sudden drop in the current. So, for this observation to happen, you know for to have you have to have negative differential resistance and this is a bulk material remember this is not a junction. So, to have this gun oscillation or the gun uh, effect observed, you need three condition. Number A, the separation of the two valley has to be significantly larger than the room temperature energy or at any temperature you are looking it should be more than kt. Okay. What it means is that this separation, this separation, this separation which is 0 0.36 should be larger than room temperature otherwise you will not see it. Why? Because your room temperature energy is much larger, if it is much larger than the separation then the room temperature will smear it out. The thermally it will all be the, th in a, the thermal energy will make sure that you get that negative peak or negative differential at such a low voltage or almost 0 voltage that it is almost meaningless. The thermal effect will smear it out. Okay, So, you do not want that. right? Number second condition is that this separation of the two valley must be less than the band gap. Because if it is more than band gap, you need to go to a such a high field that the device will break down. Okay, Else it will break down. You see my point? If your band gap, if the separation is much larger than band gap, then you have to apply a very high voltage or a field the material will break down. So, it has to be larger than smaller than that. And the third condition that has to be met is that electrons in the primary valley which is the gamma valley, right? the electrons in the gamma valley must have high mobility, must have high mobility which means it must have a small effective mass correct? compared to the satellite valley, the valley to which you are pumping it out. right? Compared to the satellite valley, it should have a smaller effective mass a higher uh, mobility. In other words d e the, the curvature of the lower valley, the curvature of the lower valley should be much much larger than the curvature of the upper valley. This curvature of the upper valley should be as low as this is the curvature. The curvature of the upper valley should be as low as possible, the curvature of the lower valley should be as high as possible. So, a higher curvature gives you higher mobility because it has a lower effective mass. Okay. So, these three conditions have to be satisfied in order for the gun effect to be observed in any material. This was dictated by the RWH theory. Okay. This is all fine. Now, we, sh we have to talk about the fact that you have negative differential resistance, negative differential resistance gives rise to something called domain formation. <coughs> okay. And this domain formation actually leads to oscillation this domain formation leads to oscillation. Okay. So, what is this domain formation or the high field domain that we are talking about? Okay. Uh, what happens is that if we look at any uh, at a sample of gallium arsenide, okay, if you look at a sample of say this is a sample of gallium arsenide for instance, you have a negative here, you have a positive here. Because of certain inherent noise or inherent non-uniformity in the material in terms of doping or some property, you could have a a domain that forms and the domain could be say an electron accumulation. Maybe the electron accumulates slightly more than in that other region. There could be slight accumulation that might happen near the cathode for instance. Okay. And when this kind of a domain small 
uh, accumulation of suppose uh, electron forms or maybe a dipole forms or something like that. Then if I plot the charge across the sample then I have a small extra charge that comes up here. And then if I plot the electric field okay, how will it look like because there is a charge here the electric field is suppose constant and suddenly at this step the electric field will rise because there is a charge here the charge has come because of some uh, accumulation of electrons for instance okay, a small domain that forms. Okay. And because the electric field because there is a charge here so the electric field has a step because the derivative of the electric field the step function is a delta function. So, you have electric field step here and because the electric field is low here and the electric field is high here. Now, recall the IV curve or the velocity field curve I will say the velocity field curve. So, velocity increases and then decreases and goes. Now, if I consider these three points here this point this point this point for instance in if I talk about this region then with a lower electric field with a lower electric field I have a higher velocity correct and with a higher electric field this part I have a lower velocity correct. So, what happens is that if the velocity is high at this part right and if the velocity is low at this part that means the I am bringing in more electrons here, but I am taking out less electrons here why because there is a lower velocity on the other side. So, what it means is that if I am bringing more electrons here because of higher velocity and taking out less electrons here because of fewer electrons here because of lower velocity then this part will have a further accumulation more accumulation will happen correct and more accumulation will give rise to a further difference in the field this will become even lower field this side will become even higher field. So, initially suppose you are here you are here and here now your higher field will become even higher say here and your lower field will become even lower like here. <coughs> so, the velocity difference is even high now very high. So, more electrons will come and fewer electrons will go accumulation will increase even further and because this is a like a positive feedback you are having. So, there is more accumulation. So, the, the, the field will drop even further now. So, the field will come somewhere here and the okay the low field and the high field on the right side the field will come somewhere here <coughs> and ultimately they will reach a steady state where the field here the well gives the same velocity as this. So, both sides this is your field on the right side this is on the field on the left side of the, the domain they have the same velocity they have the same velocity okay. in, in that case this part and this part they move with the same velocity. So, the domain has become st a stable you know a stable uh, high field domain this is happening at high field right. So, we formed a stable high field domain the domain will now propagate it will disappear on the anode side and they again another will form at the cathode side and again it will disappear. This do domain traveling and we call it a space charge domain sometimes a space charge region that keeps traveling disappearing in the anode again reappearing at the cathode disappearing at the anode again appearing at the cathode this gives rise to the oscillation. <coughs> However, there are many many things here it depends on the doping density of the material it depends on the length of the material the length that you are using the product of this dif the doping density and length is very important and the frequency of this oscillation in some cases it will depend on the transit time of the domain in some cases it will be dictated by the external circuit you are putting this, uh, the, 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 this diode has to be put in a cavity and that will determine your uh, period of oscillation in some cases. Okay. But in a sense this is the physics of the domain formation uh, and how the domain formation leads to the oscillation of uh, the, <coughs> the, the signal that you are feeding in it will the DC signal will convert into an AC signal and it will come out from the. So, this is a domain was forming because there is an excess electron accumulation because of some non uniformity in the material may be doping or some kind of noise or something, but it did not always be an accumulation of electron it could be even a dipole. For instance, I have a sample like that I have a negative sheet I have a positive sheet this dipole also might form because of some kind of non uniformity and the dipole itself could be a space charge region that is traveling through the material appearing at the cathode and disappearing at the anode and gives rise to this oscillation also okay. in this dipole is separated very small distance suppose delta t. So, this traveling space charge accumulation okay, uh, to form and to of course, travel keep and back and forth and create oscillation you need to have this condition satisfied that there is a sufficient number of electrons inside this material <coughs> the sufficient number of electrons inside this crystal such that the space charge or the domain can build up and you give a sufficient length of the sample L such that they can transit through the sample. If your sample is extremely low doped that is there is not sufficient electrons then you will not build up the domain 
correct or if your sample is too short then also you will not get enough time for the domains to transit so there are different conditions and different modes in which this can oscillate or may not oscillate okay sample has to be long enough first of all and sample has to have enough number of electrons or doping to sustain the <coughs> and build the charge those are three very important things now there are different modes of oscillation in this kind of a gun diode what we talked about is the basic physics but now the mode of oscillation can be very different depending on the doping and the the length and other things okay gun diode as we talked about you know you, you may have a an accumulation region or maybe a dipole which is an instability i mean it's accumulation and that keeps growing uh, and that leads to this domain formation you know the high field domain formation this domain will move from cathode you know to anode and that uh, it will disappear, disappear at the anode again it will reappear at cathode and so on and so forth that gives rise to the oscillation so this is a culmination of the negative resistance you know uh, because of the negative resistance where you have this is say you know you can say this is the current versus voltage or you can even say this is velocity versus field because of the negative resistance region this NDR uh, we explained that the field at this point for instance point 1 is actually higher than uh, the field is point, point 1 is lower than at, at, at point 2 and the electron velocity is higher at point 1 than at point 2 and that is the reason why uh, we discussed you know. So now the thing is uh, this domain formation has something called a growth factor okay uh, in a way it tells you how much is the domain uh, growing in size for instance if this is your point 0 and this is your point L which is the length of the sample then what you are looking at the growth factor is basically the size of the domain in some way at this point at the point L after a time L by V where V is the, the velocity of the domain so L by V is basically the transit time. So at a distance of L at a time of L by V with respect to 0 comma 0. So at 0 point at 0 time there was some domain and at distance of L at a time of L by V what is the domain size in a way you can say this is basically the, the, the growth factor and after some mathematics you know it comes out to be about exponential of L times the electron concentration or doping charge times mobility of electron divided by the dielectric constant times velocity okay. Um, and so for a space charge growth you know for the domain to grow this factor has to be larger than 1 you know then the domain will grow. And so from there people find out that N naught times L the doping or the free carrier concentration times L should be more than epsilon naught epsilon s uh, velocity divided by Q mean. Now if you take a sample size standard a standard mobility of electron in this kind of sample is about 150 centimeter square per volt second if you take that then this product NL into L the N N naught into L the product of the doping times the length this comes out to be about 10 to the power 12 whatever units you are taking okay 10 to the power 12 uh, centimeter per uh, actually per centimeter square because L is a centimeter and doping is per centimeter square. So this quantity comes up. So this quantity is used uh, as a as a uh, factor in differentiating different types of modes of oscillation or the gun diode can be operated in different modes of oscillation. So people usually take this as like a sacred number or some kind of a benchmarking number against which uh, they try to explain or come up with different domain or the oscillation modes. For instance there is gun oscillation mode okay there is a gun oscillation mode we will come to what gun oscillation mode is of course and gun oscillation mode might have further modes you know there may be a transit time mode okay there could be a delayed domain mode delayed domain mode right and then there could be a quenched mode we will come to this in, in very short of course quench mode can be there right and then there could be an LSA mode limited space charge accumulation mode okay. And then of course apart from gun oscillation mode you could also have other modes uh, there could be for instance uh, an a stable a stable amplification mode a stable amplification mode okay. This is another mode of gun oscillation you can I mean it is an oscillation of the gun diode for instance okay. Uh, so <coughs> there are different and then there is a bias circuit oscillation mode which we are not going to talk about so much here. So what happens is that in some cases your transit time the domain moves across the sample this is a transit time the transit time will dictate the frequency at which you oscillate. In some cases the resonant cavity or the tuning circuit where you put the uh, 
uh, diode will determine the oscillation frequency okay based on uh, and, and this depends on the doping uh, and not which I say for instance uh, it also depends on the, the length of the sample the frequency that you are looking at the bias that you are applying and so on and so forth okay. So if I come to the gun oscillation mode first you know if I talk about the gun oscillation mode typically the gun oscillation mode is observed if your sample doping times the length of the sample is in the range of around 10 to the power 14 less than 10 to the power 14 but more than 10 to the power 12 okay. So your, your space charge domain will move from cathode to anode and the frequency of oscillation of this kind of a diode is given by the domain velocity divided by the effective length that it travels. What is effective length? The effective length actually tells you that the length that the domain will travel from the time it is formed right to the time a new domain forms. Now it need not always be the time taken for if you, if you have a sample of length L 0 and this is L the time taken for the domain to move from cathode to anode need not always be the time between the formation of two subsequent or two you know uh, adjacent domains they could form even earlier they could form even later. So L effective is the distance that the domain will move okay uh, from the time a domain is formed to the time a new domain is formed and V domain is the domain velocity okay this is the frequency of oscillation. However, if the circuit is resistive or what I mean by resistive is that if you have a constant voltage drop constant voltage drop across the diode okay if you have a constant voltage drop across the diode you have a purely resistive diode for instance then the period of oscillation is equal to the time required for the domain to move from cathode to anode which is the transit time okay okay so your period of oscillation period of oscillation is equal to the transit time the transit time for the domain to move from cathode to anode okay so that is very easy to actually however this mode is typically not used in RF application uh, you know because the negative differential devices such as gun diode are usually operated in a resonant circuit or in a cavity where you can tune the frequency based on some other parameters and you know that that is how we have to do it but it is not always that you need to have a constant voltage drop to maintain this kind of a uh, uh, what I mean to say this kind the period of oscillation need not always be equal to transit time. So that is why we break this gun oscillation into four different categories you know transit time this transit time is precisely that you know where in the transit time your velocity of the domain is exactly equal to the velocity the drift velocity of the electrons that you are having the, the, the domain that is moving. So the period of oscillation is e exactly equal to the your drift time tau t that is the time taken by the domain to move. So the frequency is 1 pi you know 1 by 2 pi tau t this is a frequency of oscillation and it is purely dictated by the transit time okay transit time from cathode to anode is precisely the frequency of oscillation it does not depend on the tuning circuit or the cavity where you are putting it out okay but this is not the commonly used mode of RF oscillation in gun, gun mode okay. Then second of course is the delayed domain mode under gun oscillation you have a delayed domain mode what does delayed domain mode is it mean is that the frequency at uh, which you are going to operate times the length of the sample will be between 10 to the power 7 and 10 to the power 6 okay not n not l but this is frequency term l. Essentially what happens is that if I do it pictorially it, it becomes be easier to understand. So you know if I am plotting the oscillation for instance and on the y axis and on the x axis I am plotting the time then you know you have your transit time which is exactly like this for instance where this is your transit time tau t t equal to tau t okay and suppose this is your threshold electric field what is the threshold electric field you have an NDR like that. So this is your threshold electric field the field above which you get the NDR below that you do not get it okay. So you do not get NDR below this field here you will not get the field okay. Then there is also ES, ES is this this is uh, the, the field at which your velocity will kind of attain the saturation you know this is actually this is velocity by field. So this velocity by field goes like that so this is your field at which your velocity eventually will become uh, saturated in a way okay. So what is happening is that this is your transit time mode where the period of oscillation is exactly equal to the transit time however in the delayed mode what happens is that maybe I will take a different color that will make it easier. So in delayed mode your frequency uh, your oscillation will happen something like uh, in the tune of uh, okay and goes like that okay. So what is happening here is that you see at this point it is crossing each threshold. So what it means is that uh, 
your the domain at this point uh, you know where this po this point is where the field is less than the threshold so you are looking at this field this part okay so your domain and this is your this is your transit time right so the domain is collected at the anode right the domain is collected at the anode when your field is actually less than the critical field required for negative threshold which means when the domain is collected at the from cathode to the anode this is your anode this is a cathode and the domain is collected at the anode at that time the field is low enough and at that time the negative differential resistance is not activated in the next cycle. So, what happens is that a new domain a new domain does not form or you can say cannot form a new domain cannot form correct until the field again becomes more than e threshold. So, the field has to again cross this is your e threshold correct this is your e threshold. So, only at this point at this point only the domain can again form. So, the oscillation period here the period of oscillation is actually greater than the transit time which means your frequency is lower correct. So, this is your delayed mode of oscillation in the gun then comes the quenched mode ok. So, in quench mode I can again draw pictorially where essentially sorry in pictorial representation if I go the quench mode the opposite happens here. So, again if I draw this ok here if this is this is your uh, transit time limited then I will take a different color ok. In quench mode you have something like uh, maybe something like that ok this oscillation will be something it is shorter than the period and this is your threshold and this is your for instance your s ok and if you look at the previous curve you understand what is E s and what is uh, threshold here. So, in quench mode what happens is that your frequency oscillation is pretty high. So, the product of frequency times length is actually more than 2 into 10 to the power 7 ok and the domain collapses the domain collapses before reaching the anode correct before reaching the anode. So, what happens is that once you cross the E t t h your you do not have the negative differential resistance and once you go below the E s ok uh, your domain once you are below this at this part your domain collapses ok your domain collapses before reaching the anode and until you cross this threshold again a new domain cannot form. So, a new domain is formed here a new domain is formed when it crosses E t h again new domain is formed here right. And so, essentially the frequency oscillation is faster than the transit time I mean the, tra the time required for one cycle is actually less than the transit time this is your transit time correct. So, your frequency of oscillation is more uh, than what the intrinsic transit time would have dictated. So, the oscillation frequency hereby it can be dictated by the resonance circuit or the tuning cavity where you are putting the gun diode ok and it could be a couple of times of the transit time based or limited frequency ok please keep that in mind. So, here the domain will collapse ok here the domain will collapse before the domain reaches the anode and a new domain will form. So, if you have a sample from here 0 to L this is a domain suppose before the domain reaches the anode before the domain reaches the anode another domain will form that is what is happening in this picture ok. So, that is that is that is the quench mode and the final mode here in under gun oscillation is actually LSA mode limited space charge accumulation mode this is almost similar to quench except that this is even faster. So, essentially it will be like ok and this is your transit time ok this is your E t h this is your E s correct. So, when the frequency is too high if your frequency if you in, in this case the frequency oscillation will be too high the domains do not get enough time the domains do not get enough time to form enough time to form while the energy is more than E t h ok enough time to form. So, you mean to say this is your E t h let me change the color here ok. So, in this part domain cannot form and in this part the domain can form because energy is more than E t h, but this time is so small it is so small that the domains do not get enough time to form when it is above there ok. So, accumulation any accumulation of electrons near the cathode has time to collapse while E is less than E s here you know here the, 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 the domain will collapse if there is an accumulation of the domain near the cathode 
okay. So, what happens is that you do not get enough time to form. So, this LSA mode essentially consists of a more or less an uniformly doped semiconductor without much space charge in between, okay. And the internal field is uniform and your frequency of oscillation could be much larger than the transit time, okay. And the typical range n not by f here is around 2 into 10 to the power 5 and this is 2 into 10 to the power 4, okay, in the LSA mode. One more thing actually in the LSA mode is that the summary of the LSA mode essentially is that high field domains do not get enough time to form while your field is more than the threshold field, okay. And the RF voltage swing is large enough, this swing is large, you know the swing is actually large swing such that it will drive your value of the field ab ab above and below the, the threshold required for NDR, okay. And one condition is that the, the duration for which the field is above the threshold should be short enough that the domain gets does not get enough time to form. The only primary accumulation layer in this case is the one near cathode and the rest of the sample is more or less homogeneous, okay. So, what happens is that if you have a sample from 0 to L, near the cathode you have a domain that forms but it hardly gets time to form, you know. So, the rest of the sample looks like a uniformly doped semiconductor, okay. Only here you have a domain. Now, but there is the negative differential resistance will definitely be there, right. So, the rest of this sample, this entire sample, it appears as a series connection of a negative resistance, correct. So, it appears as a series resistance of negative connection, a negative resistance to the, the domain that kind of forms near the cathode. So, this will dictate the frequency of oscillation, it is imagine it is like a tank circuit, you have a negative resistance uh, on the sample and in the, the start of the sample you have a domain that forms, okay, that hardly gets time to form. So, you have a series combination of negative resistance with this domain that is barely forming, so that creates this oscillation and it, its oscillation frequency can be very high. Okay, and in this case your diode has to be placed in a resonator or a tuning circuit, okay, it has to be placed in a resonator and the frequency of the resonator will determine the overall frequency of the oscillation, okay. And the device is biased at a quite a high field so that you have the high swing and you do not allow the space charge to build up per se, okay. So, your frequency of oscillation has to be determined by the external circuit or the cavity where you are putting it. Output power in this mode can be high, the frequency is high, the output power also can be high. People talk about really high power even at like few gigahertz of frequencies for instance, okay. So, this is uh, in the this mode and then there is one more mode which is the stable amplification mode. Stable amplification mode is a little bit of a different kind of a mode in the sense, I will go to a different slide here. So, there is a stable amplification mode as the name suggests, this mode will amplify although gun diode is not widely used for as an amplifier because we have transistors, but it is a stable amplifier mode and oscillation does not happen here, okay. It is a different kind of a mode. What happens is that your doping density is very low, so low that your doping times length is actually less than 10 to the power 12 that, that sacred number if you remember. So, you do not actually. Uh, they, you have too few carriers, you have too few carriers, okay. You have too few carriers to form domain, you have too few carriers to form domain, okay, within the transit time, all right. But you still have NDR, the negative differential resistance exists, but the domain does not exist because you have too few carriers to form the domain, okay. So, in this case, you can actually at the transit time tau equal to tau r, at that transit time uh, near the transit frequency okay, you can actually amplify a signal, which means you need to bring a small signal and it, it will amplify to give you a large signal. You are not generating an oscillation, you are not generating an oscillation here, you are merely amplifying it, okay. So, at the transit time frequency only it will amplify because you, you are not talking about domain formation here. You are essentially, you essentially you are utilizing the negative differential resistance without domain formation, without any domain formation, okay. And so that can be, uh, but but we will not talk much here because you know two terminal devices are not very good trans amplifiers, so you know it's not widely successful that way. However, gallium arsenide is not the only material to exhibit and uh, gun effect. Even materials such as indium phosphide also can do it. And in indium phosphide, the domain formation theory does not hold true. Uh, there is no domain formation per se, uh, but there are three valleys here. In indium phosphide, you have a lower valley, you have a middle valley, 
and then you have upper valley okay three valleys are there so this spacing could be 0 0.6 electron volt and this could be around 0 0.6 ele uh, 0 0.8 electron volt okay so the lower valley middle valley upper valley so you can go from here to here you can go from here to here all right so this lower valley and upper valley are strongly coupled though okay they are strongly coupled and because of this valley separation and the fact that they have three valleys uh, what happens in indium phosphate this is indium phosphide indium phosphide actually exhibits gun effect at a higher field and at a higher peak to va valley ratio so if your gallium arsenide was something like that correct uh, your indium phosphide could look something like so your peak to the valley ratio is actually higher for indium phosphide based gun diode than the peak to valley ratio for gallium arsenide okay because it has three valley system and has a higher peak to valley ratio because of this higher separation of these valleys so electrons can go from lower to the middle middle to the higher okay uh, and it's not domain formation all right because the three valley model actually prevents you from forming domain in this kind of a material system okay all right so we already talked about microbe generation here but now in general if we when you when you talked about uh, impact diode we had shown you the you know if i talk about microwave power here okay it can go from all the way from 0 0.01 watt to hundreds of watt okay and we are talking about frequency from 1 gigahertz to maybe 100 gigahertz in a log log scale we said that you know impact diode silicon impact diode uh, something like that gallium arsenide impact diode is something like that right uh, and then gun diodes are here these are impact the impact diodes give higher power and the gun diodes will give typically lower power than impact because the range of voltage swing here also is not as high so your gun diodes could be here this could be your gun diode so the power in general is low however impact diode suffers from huge noise because of the fact that the avalanche process is a statistically noisy process you have avalanche creation however gun gives you superior noise performance and gun diodes are very very successful commercially they are useful for generating rf power for generating rf oscillation even up to millimeter wave three terminal devices i will show you a slide it's not very that you know it, it's more uh, depends there are trade, trade offs on both side of two terminal and three terminal devices will come to that slide but two terminal devices such as gun diode are pretty uh, popular and, and many legacy systems use them in many strategic sectors also use them okay they are specially used as a local oscillator frequency generation in receivers uh, where you need hundreds of milliwatt to watt a few watts probably at higher frequencies okay so that's very much essential so this basically concludes the gun but i'll show you a slide that sh tells you that rf signal generation can be done from both three, three terminal devices such as transistors like bjt high bipolar devices mesfet hems we will come to these devices in subsequent weeks we will discuss them they could be made of different materials silicon gallium arsenide silicon germanium gallium nitride they can generate frequencies at different frequent you know different range of rf bands right from lower frequency to millimeter wave w band etc however the power typically is lower in transistor you need to have this you need to have a positive feedback and then you need to generate that uh, you need to oscillation the oscillation but the two terminal device is that way uh, the circuit is not so complicated however you have this you know impact and gun diode for instance not so much tunnel tunnel diodes have very low power because of a really low swing as we discussed and it goes from again from very low frequencies to millimeter wave and you can get 30 dBm watts of power actually more than that so two terminal devices can be very promising uh, so typically gun diode and impact diodes have higher power handling capability than transistors as far as RF power generation is concerned okay transistors can become very expensive if, especially if you go to higher frequencies uh, and because transistors are more mature in silicon but silicon is not so uh, you cannot use silicon to generate for instance gun diode okay gun diode can have very excellent noise properties also by the way okay now transistors are can be mass produced because the transistor fets bjts they can be produced in very large volume using microfabrication microelectronic fabrication in a clean room you have cmos foundries for instance you can largely scale up the production and so cost becomes very low if you have a very large volume manufacturing for you know within the specs that you are mentioning however in a two terminal diode such as a gun or an impact okay you need to have a cavity for instance wave gave cavity and the the process of making that cavity could be more complex because you have to have the precise milling assembly tuning we will show you a schematic okay in the next slide precise milling tuning assembly and that is custom made you know one by one you cannot have a large 
microelectronic fabrication because this is not a wafer process it is a waveguide a waveguide is a cavity a cavity is not something you fabricate in a CMOS foundry. So, your volumes are not so high it takes little more time effort. So, it it, it it's more difficult in some case you know but it is still a very simple solution it is very cost effective if you have a few you know requirement is not millions of parts ok and that is waveguide could be many anything it could be a hollow waveguide micro strip rectangular but there are certain benefits of certain waveguides over other ok. And when I when I say cavity or a waveguide it basically is a metallic enclosure you can say uh, with conducting walls you are enclosing a volume so that you you let the oscillation be there inside the cavity it cannot die out outside because metals they do not allow the electric fields to come out. So, you can find electric field you can get very high quality factor 4000 quality factor is basically how much energy um, how you can say how much energy you are having inside the cavity divided by how much cavity is how much energy is dissipated outside the cavity it is very less the cavity energy dissipated outside is very less because of the metallic enclosure. So, you can get very high Q factors here ok. So, this is a schematic of uh, a gun diode in a cavity. So, this is actually a cavity this is the gun diode you see this is the gun diode it is mounted on a post and the post is again put feed fed through a DC bias and a choke there is an RF choke here. The RF choke is like an inductor you can say it, it prevents you from having unwanted modes of oscillation unwanted frequency oscillation. So, that is an RF choke that you put it there and in the post you mount it inside the cavity this is the cavity you see and this is a metallic wall of course right and this is a cylindrical post here. This tuning screw which can penetrate through the you know the enclosure and it, it can change this width here it is basically used for tuning impedance matching you can say. The impedance that you see the Z impedance can be changed because even if it is a cavity mounted uh, gun diode for instance you still need to match the impedance with the, the line the cable or wherever you are feeding. So, the impedance matching for the impedance matching you have this screw uh, you can do a more fine tuned impedance matching ok. You can do a more fine tuned impedance matching and this is a shorting piston or you know a movable back shot people say uh, this is again for optimal power delivery optimal coupling. This is also you can say an impedance match you can move this back and forth to create this space of lambda by 4 or whatever that will help you match the impedance this screw is for fine tuning that impedance ok. This is for crude tuning of the impedance and then of course, the the frequency oscillation here you can see this delta g by 2 delta g is the default frequency oscillation of the cavity. So, delta by g by 2 i this is the opening through which you are going to couple it and so this is basically a your a schematic of a waveguide oscillator in which you are mounting the uh, the gun diode and how does it practically look like practically it looks like this this is without a heat sink this is with a heat sink this black thing is a heat sink it takes away the heat ok it is a heat sink you can see this is your tuning screw that I show, showed in the previous slide correct. So, that is your tuning screw here and this is your feed line of course right and this is your uh, a gun diode and this is from a commercial vendor for instance this I have quoted the website from which I am taking the image uh, this this is a commercial wave uh, gun diode wave guide oscillator at 35 gigahertz frequency you can buy from a company here I have not listed the name of the company where which is selling it, but you can buy it I mean this is commercially available very much ok. And these are some images of short key diodes for instance again this is a uh, sorry short key impact diode this is an impact diode again look, looks very similar you have a screw you have a feed here. So, short key uh, impact diodes are also commercially available right and these are packets of some of the other impact diode oscillators that you can buy this is a schematic of the of this impact diode that is being used here ok. This is a tunnel diode actually this is a tunnel oscillator diode that is available in the market, but these are not very super successful because the power densities are pretty low there ok. But both impact and diode and uh, gun diode can be mounted in a cavity and they are sold as such uh, both of them have wide application, but gun diode seems to be uh, you know even more popular in many of the systems because of the fact that they have lower noise than impact ok. Although somewhat the power is kind of low and impact can give you higher power. So, with that we will come to a conclusion of this lecture 14. Uh, which brings us to the end of uh, discussion on two terminal diodes for microwave power generation and power oscillation ok. We talked about gun diode, impact diode and tunnel diode uh, within the context and scope of this course that is more than enough to understand how the negative differential resistance whether it is in DC or AC is exploited to generate microwave oscillation. In some cases it is dictated by the resonance circuit in some cases it is dictated by the diode itself ok. From now on we will start the discussion on transistor from next week uh, we will have discussion starting from compound semiconductor MOSFET, HEMPS and pseudomorphic HEMPS. So, these three topics will cover the next three weeks we will have 6 plus 4 plus 4 lectures on the next three weeks, but we will mix and match because many of the concepts of microwave devices are pretty much the same for all kinds of MOSFETs, HEMPS or pseudomorphic HEMPS uh, 
uh, in terms of microwave understanding is underlying is the same the device physics is different. So, we will we'll talk about these devices in details on the fabrication on the, on, the, on the practical relevance on how they work what are the what are the challenges in these devices and in general how real world devices are being made there okay so with that thank you for your time and we'll conclude lecture 14 here today thank you